Good morning, everybody. Um, I just thought I would um, pop on. It's it's a gorgeous day here in Wales and it's been really, really rainy and horrible. And I thought a little bit of sunshine. I'm going to come on and I'm going to first of all, welcome anybody who is new to the group, because we have had so many new people joining from all over the world and doing all sorts of roles in the early years. I'm figuring that's because many of you, not all, but many of you have gone on a break now and you're starting to find a little bit of headspace to think about things. So I've noticed, as I've said in the description, that the main conversations happening on the groups the, that you're in, because I keep an eye on lots of the groups, things like early adopters and teaching reception, and some other maths groups out there. And I watch what you're talking about and think about what that tells me about what you're thinking, what you're stuck with and how I can best help you because that is obviously my role. So the two things that are subvertising there, the two things that I've seen, first of all, it is about setting up your provision. And I'm really careful with my language. I don't wanna talk about classrooms. I don't wanna talk about school. I don't wanna talk about teachers. We are all teachers, but to make sure that you know I'm talking to you. I talk about practitioners because in this group and in my world of EY Maths, you are in every possible country in the world and growing. You are working um, with predominantly three to five year olds, but of course, younger children and slightly older children and children with specific special needs. We either within that mainstream provision or a school specifically for that. You might be a childminder, you might be a home educator. So I'm gonna talk about your provision, your setting and you as a practitioner. And I hope that helps us to all look at the common ground there as well. My work is specifically aimed at three, four and five year olds, but I can and will advise you on slightly younger and slightly older children if you wish. So the first thing is your classroom provision. So I've written a blog about this, the first of a few, and I'm just going to make sure you know where to go to find that because we want to kind of a joined up world. This is something I'm going to show you in a moment, but I'm going to go here and take you in and show you what it looks like. Because if you're new, knowing where to start is the main thing, isn't it? So the first thing that happens when you go to EY Maths is you'll get this little pop up. And if you read through this, this is about us keeping in touch and you will get a wonderful freebie. So you'll get 14 lovely instantly downloadable super subvertising cards. So just fill your details in there. And you'll also then keep in touch with us, but spend some time on the website, go and have a look around, but I'm going to show you here, blog, and I've just reactivated my blog, and what I'm talking about here is the reality of setting up your early years provision for next year. So I was an early years teacher for many, many years, and I've also taught right through to 11 year olds, every single year group full time. So when I talk about this, I'm talking about it from many different points of view. So have a look there. That's the first thing. And uh, just controlling all my little buttons there. So that's the first thing I want you to look at. And the second thing is you're talking about planning. And oh my goodness, I started training in the late 80s. I started teaching in the early 90s. And my understanding of what planning is and why it exists and how it can serve me and of course my children best has literally gone through so many evolutions and the problem was many of the earlier changes iterations of planning the majority of my career I'd say they weren't me changing my planning there were always templates that someone else gave me and things to fill in and I never really stopped and questioned until I moved into an advisory role that does this work and what is it for and I worry as well I worry a lot about time saving with planning because time saving working efficiently is hugely important for your well-being and for your family life but the place to save time as in not do it is not planning because planning is the essence of your provision and we generally don't like doing things as practitioners if we don't see the purpose that's the issue it's rarely actually using your time it's more that you think oh something else I've got to do so if you're filling in boxes 
and it doesn't really impact on the way you think and the way your children learn, then you would be naturally feeling like you're going to move away from it. So that's what I want to start the conversation with today and have a little look with you. So I'm going to go over to what I showed before. So this is to start a conversation today. I've got masses and masses of resources and training and advice for you. But this is the first one that I want to share. This is part of what is called my Pathway Membership. And again, if you go and look on the website, you will see if I just pop back over there, if you want to know more about this, just get rid of that to show you where to go. I am going to be updating this as well and making it even more clear. So learning as an individual pathway and impact, that's the page to go and have a look at. But let's go back to here. So pathway at the moment is a, a monthly membership with me. It is a you know, no tie in, cancel any time membership, so nothing to lose. But this is one of the resources in the Pathway Library, which I'm going to share with you today for free. You don't have to be a Pathway member. And I want you to think about these three things best with a cuppa, set 15 minutes on your phone if you've got a mad busy life, and just create a little bit of brain space. Because believe me, these three questions will change the way you teach forever and make your life so much easier and they will enable your children to make much better progress, which will make you happier and healthier and keep everybody else happy as well. So I am known for this model, why, how, what. So I want you to think about, for example, with our long-term planning. So long-term is about the idea of when am I going to teach it and how are these skills going to build on each other over the years? So I call that a toolbox. But I want you to think, why do we need long-term planning? So if we focus on that one, the why is the most important thing. When you know your why, you stay really motivated, you stay really focused. And when things come along to derail you, you will be so much better at sticking to your destination. And I said, there's lots more I can tell you about this. Then we move to what's called how. So the how stage is, well, how do children best learn the skills that I have put into this long-term planning. So for example, you might say, I want my children to learn to subitize. I want my children to learn to count. So you can look at when are you gonna be teaching those skills over the year? And again, as I say, I can help you lots more with that. But then you think how, what motivates your children? What makes them want to learn? What makes sense to them? What brings them alive? What makes them vital? And if you work with the wonderful Greg Bottrell, think about what brings them joy. So that's Greg's line and I think it's just perfect. Because if we don't use the vehicles through which our children learn, they won't learn. And the trouble is we'll think of I taught it so they should have learned it. And believe me, I wasted decades thinking like that. Finally, we have what's called the what. So we've thought about why have we got a plan in this way, long-term planning in this case. How are my children, do they best learn? How do they show me they best learn? And then therefore, what kinds of activities do I need to plan? And what I'm going to leave you with today is this then starts to feed into medium term and short term planning. And those members in Impact know that I have created some very different medium term planning. I created it about 15 years ago or more even. So I created a new approach to medium term planning a really long time ago because particularly working with Key Stage 2 teachers, which I used to support, People were thinking of long term planning is when am I going to teach it? Medium term was like the whole curriculum recorded. And believe me, if you've ever taught anything other than early years in, say, in England, key stage one and two, the amount of content that was in key stage, sorry, not key stage two. So the amount of content in medium term planning was just the curriculum, you know, put in detail. And you get to your short term planning. So, for example, I might be teaching fractions to year three, uh, so that's seven and eight year olds. And I'd arrive there at the weekend before I was supposed to teach it. And I'd be like, oh, my goodness, like it says I've got to teach fractions and it says they've got to learn all of this. And I have not got a clue how I'm going to do this. I don't know what they know already. I'm not very confident in my own knowledge. So the medium term that I have created is the most important planning there is. And that is something I'll talk to you about another time. But it is the idea 
of what is it I need to know about, so let's go back to early years, what is it I need to know about the progression, the trajectories of, for example, subitizing? How does subitizing connect with counting? If I don't know that, I can't put in place the what, which is my short-term planning. What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do the day after? So does that make sense to everyone? So just to recap, and I just want your thoughts at this point, you know, and I can see that Liz has joined. Oh, that's so lovely to see you. Liz is what's known as my greater impact. So she is in impact and she's done our Teaching Essential Number Sense course and graduated from that. And she's moved into what's called greater impact. And she's in Northumberland walking her dog. So morning, Liz. So I'm going to recap on a few things there. First of all, the number one thing you're talking about is organizing your provision. So Let's just recap on there. If you pop over to the EY Maths website, here's the homepage, you'll get a little pop up, go to the blog. And there is the blog, part one, you can continue reading there on setting up your classroom based on many, many, many years of experience myself. And I've had lovely feedback from you about how you can relate to that. And then number two is I want you to think about why we plan. Why do we have long term planning? And some of you might not have it or some of you might have it from a scheme. And I want to sort of drill down with you about why you absolutely need to take control over your planning. And I want you to want to do that. So at the moment, if you're someone who thinks I need a scheme, I need someone to tell me what to do. I want you to think, why do you think that? Why do you believe that? And it's likely to be, I'm not confident in teaching the maths myself. I don't have time to think about this. And when I do, my head just goes into a tailspin. And I trust that the scheme, if I follow it, will teach these children maths. That isn't going to happen. Schemes can't teach maths. You teach the maths. We can use a scheme, but following a scheme is very different. So I want you to think, what are those reasons why you have someone else's long term planning, when to teach what? And if you're writing it yourself, why do you need it? Or if you're in provision without that pressure and you don't have a sense of what you focus on, particularly if you're working with very young children, you might be in that situation, particularly if you work in a non-school setting. Why would knowing that help enhance your provision? And I want you to want to do this. I want you to come into my world and join the literally hundreds and definitely, I should say, thousands of practitioners now who, if we said, do you want to plan your own maths or not? They'd be like, of course I want to plan my own maths. And in fact, I can't fit everything in that I now know helps my children learn brilliantly. So if this resonates with you, if you're excited about what I'm saying, then just keep tuning in and we'll keep talking about it. So pop some thoughts below, focus on just one thing, get a cuppa in your hand, pop 15 minutes on your phone, have a look at that handout that I showed on the screen and pop some thoughts, questions, wow bombs below and we'll go from there. But otherwise, whatever you are doing today on your Thursday, take care everyone. My sister has, an, has a wonderful phrase, which is do something to fill your cup. And my sister has a severely disabled son. And if she can say that, she looks every day for something to fill her cup, something to make sure she's looking after herself first. So I would love to hear from you about what yours is on that front as well. I think Liz is filling her cup with her beautiful dog in Northumberland. So can't wait to hear from you. Take care, everyone.